ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതെ വാസുദേവായ Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 2, Text 44. A well-known verse, one of many verses in Bhagavad Gita that if we could just actually understand the purport of our whole lives would be completely perfect actually any verse but some verses are key to our understanding of krishna consciousness and this is one of them so here it is bhoga ishvarya prasaktanam bhoga ishvarya prasaktanam tayā pahrita cetasa Vyavasāyātmikā buddhī Vyavasāyātmikā buddhī Samādho na vidhīyate Please chant. Translation. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place purport samadhi means fixed mind the vedic dictionary the nirukti says samyag adhiyate smin atma tattva yathamyam when the mind is fixed for understanding the self it is said to be in samadhi samadhi is never possible for persons interested in material sense enjoyments and bewildered by such temporary things they are more or less condemned by the process of material energy you know as i was saying this is a a key verse in bhagavad gita understanding of which is essential for attaining krishna consciousness by describing what krishna consciousness is not we have some insight into what krishna consciousness is those who are very much attached to material enjoyment and material opulence they cannot attain steadiness their mind cannot be fixed their mind is bewildered by the prospect of material enjoyment and material opulence and the mind therefore cannot be fixed in devotional service akha this word is used just four verses from here in connection with the vyavasayatmika buddhi is it not four verses yes no three verses so yeah. in connection with the vyavasay vyavasayatmika buddhi the fixed intelligence that oneness pointedness that is also described there is a saying that the secret of life is one thing so you're waiting to hear what is the one thing well that's it one thing if you fix on one thing then you can perfect it but if you fix if you try to do many things then it's jack of all trades and master of none that's a saying the secret of life is one thing but well, that one thing 
is, or the perfection of life, is to focus on that. Vastava Vastu, the real thing. What is the real thing? Not Coke. <laughs> the real thing is Krishna. So one who's fixed in service to Krishna, then they see nothing else. The example is given in Mahabharata, or the an anecdote is told in this regard, of shooting practice. The young boy's shooting practice under the tutelage of Dronachai. So there was a a clay bird fixed in a tree. And Dronacharya asked his young students, teenage students, the five Pandavas, Duryodhana and others, that now you have to shoot the right, you have to shoot your arrow in the eye of the bird. So he called various of them and told them, you have to shoot, now what, what do you see? And one was saying, well, I see, I see the bird, and what else do you see? I see the, the tree, and say, go away. All of them, they'd say like that. One was, I see the, the bird, I see the eye of the bird, what else do you see? I see the head of the bird, what else do you see? I see the body of the bird, what else do you see? I see the, the branches and leaves and trees, okay, get out of here. You're no good. And eventually, Arjuna, he told that I, I see only the eye of the bird. And what else do you see? I don't see anything else. I'm only looking at that. Okay, shoot. Focus. So the secret of life is one thing. Generally a person is successful if they, if they concentrate in one line. There, there have been multifaceted genii, but mostly if you fix on one thing, then one can become more and more expert in that. Samadhi here is referred to at that state in which the mind is fixed on one thing. Buddhi is defined here as devotional service because actually to perform anything but devotional service is not really intelligent. So to have the mind fixed in devotional service. That is called Devasaya Atmika Buddhi and the opposite is Bahu Shaka Hyanantas Cha Buddhi O Vyavasayinam. Avyavasayinam, one whose mind is not fixed, he has many desires. Hyam Mayar Das Kari Nana of Hilash. When one becomes the servant of Maya, he has many desires. Many, many, many designs. And when one thinks, I am the servant of Krishna, then there is only one design. But that may also uh, be, that may also expand into many desires for this, but the focus is on the service of Krishna. The central point is that I desire to serve Krishna, and then one may desire to serve Krishna in many ways. Just like Worshipping Krishna here, we may desire that let us have more fresh flowers and fresh vegetables. We can grow nice vegetables and cook for the Lord. So many preparations and make nice dresses for him, have nice festivals for him, bring more people. So in this way, one's desires can expand, but the focus is on service to Krishna. That is the perfection of life. That is buddhi. That is actual intelligence. And just the opposite of that is the desire for material enjoyment. As I was saying, this is key to our understanding. And hopefully, those of us who have been attending lectures in the centers of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness have heard these points before. Hopefully. These are regularly discussed. And they require to be regularly discussed because we regularly discuss them and we regularly forget them. 
we discussed, yes, 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 we should be free from material desires. And uh, while at the very time we're saying it, we're thinking of some material desire to be fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just see. Even a child can understand the foolishness. <laughs> But at least those who are taking initiation in Krishna consciousness, they should at least have this determination, sankalpa, resolution. Here Srila Prabhupada writes of the resolute determination. So one should at least have the resolution, or at least the understanding that my life is meant for Krishna. What does initiation mean? Dikka kale bhakta kare akta shamarpan. Real initiation means the resolution to surrender oneself in the service of Krishna. So that promise is given, chanting 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna mantra, following four regulated principles. The promise is given. But the vital principle is not 16 rounds or four regulated principles. That is a necessary means to the end of fully surrendering ourselves in the service of Krishna. In the perfect stage, one is fully surrendered to Krishna. In the perfectional stage, it may be that circumstantially, it's it may, it's not expected to happen, but it may happen that one at least superficially breaks the regulated principles. Sometimes with the service of Krishna in unusual circumstances that might be required. Just like Srila Prabhupada told one of his disciples, he was sending him to Russia to preach and he protested that, well, there's nothing there to eat but meat. He said, well, eat meat, but go and preach. Or another of his disciples told Srila Prabhupada that I'm so busy he was personally serving Srila Prabhupada. He was the personal servant and he was actually very efficient and Prabhupada appreciated his service but he said I'm so busy I, 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 I don't have time to chant 16 rounds. Prabhupada said then anyway you just go on with your service I will maintain your spiritual life even if you don't chant 16 rounds. So this is not a blanket endorsement to eat meat or not chant 16 rounds but the point is that in special circumstances if one is if one can appreciate the principle of full surrender here Srila Prabhupada is personally saying that if you you do what I say I, I told you to chant 16 rounds follow these principles but for you with special instruction may not be to do that you you can transgress that but in doing so, you don't transgress the principle of full surrender. So in that circumstance, if one failed to follow the order, if, one, if, one, if the devotee said, no, I'm not going to go and preach, actually there, is a, there was other food to eat apart from me. Maybe not much else, but it's possible to survive without meat. Uh, but by not following that order, then one deviates from Krishna consciousness because Atma Samarpan means to follow the order even if it's apparently against the principles of Krishna consciousness. The well-known example is there of Yudhishthya Maharaj who was highly attached to being an honest man but when Krishna ordered him to be dishonest he hesitated to do so and therefore his chariot which would always go above the ground, came down. And foolish people who think that, think that his chariot came down to the ground because he told a lie. But the actual reason is because he, he didn't want to follow Krishna's instruction. Of course, he's a pure devotee, but these examples are given, they're instructive. They can be understood on various levels. Foolish people will think that, you see, Krishna's wrong. He's telling to 
tell a lie. And the proof is that Yudhishthira Maharaj's chariot came down. But the proper understanding is that he failed in this instant to fully surrender to Krishna. So those who are coming for initiation, they're supposed to understand this principle. Whatever previous disqualification may be there, and in Kali Yoga, generally the previous disqualifications are multiple and severe. But by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one can, by chanting the holy names of Krishna, associating with pure devotees, become freed from all material contaminations and attain love of Krishna. Still, there is some condition that one has to follow. It's not that only by, we say, only by, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, one can be fully purified. That's true, but how the chanting is performed, that is essential. What is the attitude? Now in America, kirtan is becoming popular with a certain class of people. But that kirtan of mayavadis, that will never give the same result of kirtan of pure devotees. Who, those who perform kirtan as a kind of pseudo-spiritual entertainment, imagining themselves to merge into some imaginary <laughs> void, they will not get the result of love of Krishna, which is the actual result of this chanting. Also popular in America at the present time is what people call Buddhism. They call it, they think it's Buddhism, but it's a profligate life or licentious kind of lifestyle and, and Buddhism. Actually, then most, in, in, in most of the Buddhist, what's called the Buddhist world, the Buddhist religion, we'll find that most, most Buddha, Buddhists in, just in Thailand, Sri Lanka, they're mostly they're meat eaters. And, uh, not following uh, a controlled life. So, in America also we find that people going on more or less with the American lifestyle and being Buddhists. There's no attempt at controlling the senses. Although many of them may be vegetarians because they think it's better for their health or for some reason like this. So Krishna consciousness means yeah, that condition is there that we cannot attempt to enjoy this material world and serve Krishna. The two propositions are opposite. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very easily awards love of Krishna through the chanting of Hare Krishna. But that condition is there. Bhaja bhaja bhai Chaitanya Nitai Sudhira Vishasakari Vishaya Chare Shri Rasha Mojiya Mukhe Balo Hari Hari Faith, with great faith, worshipping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu means that if we have faith in the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, then the endeavor for Bhoga Ishvarya, for material enjoyment and opulence, that won't be there, that must be given up. The two cannot go on side by side. One cannot be a great enjoyer, or one cannot focus on trying to be a great enjoyer of this material world and at the same time attain love of Krishna. Now, Srila Prabhupada often said that you don't have to give up your, you, come to, you can live comfortably with your wife and family and also chant Hare Krishna. That's true, but one should not endeavor, uh, a great endeavor for material advancement. That will block our great endeavor, the great endeavor that is required for spiritual advancement. 
Yes, it's easy. Chanting Hare Krishna, we can easily become spiritually advanced. But it requires some endeavor also. It's not so easy. It's not like putting a coin in the vending machine and pressing the button. Not that easy. Some endeavor is required. We have to show Krishna that we are serious to serve him. It's not such a cheap thing that we can go on with sense enjoyment and at the same time become spiritually advanced. It's, it's, it's a simple thing to understand, actually. And we'll find, as Srila Prabhupada often pointed out, that none of the great spiritual teachers in history, none of them said that you enjoy this material world and go on with your spiritual life. All of them, in, in Jesus, Muhammad, and Buddha, they all said that what, what is this? One cannot love mammon or material enjoyment and love God. It's not the two things don't go on side by side. So it's a simple point to understand. At least theoretically it can be understood that one has to endeavor for spiritual wealth. The spiritual wealth that is attained by absorption in service to Krishna. There is service to Krishna and there is service to our own senses. Simple point to understand. I hope we've all heard it many times before. So you may wonder why I've come all the way here and saying something that you've heard many times before. Well, why not? It's a good thing to hear, isn't it? I need to hear it too. Specifically, I chose to speak on this verse today because I just received a, a letter from a disciple of mine who appears to be Aparita Chaitasa, bewildered in mind, despite many years of reading Srila Prabhupada's books and actually being quite competent in philosophical understanding, philosophically inclined, quite good at explaining the philosophy, giving classes and all this, but didn't, didn't really hit the heart that Shunilena Shune Khans, Narotam Dash Thakur. He says that even though we superficially hear, but we don't actually hear. Bhaktisdan Saraswati Thakur said this to one of his earliest disciples, shortly before Bhaktisdan Saraswati Thakur passed away, he said to one of his earliest disciples, who had been his his mission, practically, formally, it went on for about 18 years, from the founding of Sri Chaitanya Mutt to his passing away, it was 18, almost 19 years. So this, and this follower had been with him shortly before that, so you could say almost 20 years, about 20 years had been with him. And Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur said to him, you never heard me. You have never seen me. Devastating thing to say, huh? You never heard me. All these years, he is a big preacher, sannyasi, going here and there, speaking the same message, but you never heard me. You never saw me. So, I just, I got this printed out. Just some points. Now you may say, well, what's this got to do with all of you? Why am I reading this out? Well, as much as we are not fixed in devotional service to Krishna, we, we all have the tendency to be attracted by material opulence and enjoyment, isn't it? The tendency is there. I appreciate and congratulate that you've come here this evening when it's a nice summer evening and you could be sitting in a, a nice garden somewhere or going for a swim or what people do on nice summer evenings. Rafting in the Boise River. In the Boise River. Okay. Well, devotees could also do that time to time. But 
our real purpose of life is to hear and chant about Krishna. So you've come here for that purpose. But still that tendency is there. And it's very strong in modern life. People are very much attached to material enjoyment. It's not just in America. It's not that only America is the great Satan. It's everywhere. <laughs> Ayatollah Khomeini was right in that respect. That the uh, that by calling America the great Satan, he meant to say that it's a very highly materialistic society with the, the values of which destroy traditional cultural and religious norms. So it's everywhere. Although America is more successful in Bhoga and Daishvarya at the present time. But as, isn't it, I mean we were just discussing this morning about how in Malaysia the people they used, the Malay people just used to live, the food is there without endeavor hardly, and it's always warm, so you don't really need to build it. You just need some shelter because it rains a lot. And people are living very simply. Now they have, they made the highest building in the world. It was highest building in the world for about two years before someone built a higher building. But there, so much highways and big cars and did they ever build a bridge to Penang? I think they must have built When I was there, they used to have the ferry crossing. They built a bridge yet to Penang Long Island? Area. Long time, yeah. So, material development, it's everywhere. Everyone is enamored by this. Srila Prabhupada pointed out, actually, what is this material enjoyment anyway? Because previously, at least in India, both men and women not just rich, everyone, they used to wear plenty of gold. Now they have plastic bangles, the women have plastic bangles and the men don't wear any jewelry at all, although both men and women used to wear. And people in their houses, they had the vessels, cooking vessels and water storage, they, they were made of minimally from brass. Now it's all aluminium or steel, or lower quality. Uh, this uh, tin can motor car civilization. People are very proud of the cars. They'll spend how much for a car? Thirty thousand dollars at least. That's the minimum. But actually, uh, if you see an accident, they're like they're just like a tin can. They're not. They just just fold up. When Srila Prabhupada he arrived in one city, the press berated him for going in a Rolls Royce car. What are you, you're supposed to be a sadhu, why are you going in a Rolls Royce car? Prabhupada said, oh, this is just some tin can. <laughs> That's all. God, he goes in a gold car. So the proper, the proper thing would be a gold car, but as you are so poverty stricken, <laughs> you only have a Rolls Royce, so Anyway, I'll graciously accept it. <laughs> That's your poverty, that you think this is opulent. But everyone is enamored by this. They think you have to have a, an apartment with... So everything is done by machine. I, I was... Generally, you see, I, 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 my cloth is washed by hand and dried in... The, not directly in the sun, in the shade. If it's dried directly in the sun, it becomes bleached and worn out quicker. But many places in America, they don't even have lines for, for drying cloth because everything's done by machine. Washing the cloth, drying the cloth. It's uh, such a funny thing that, that all the cooking, is, all the functions are done by machine. You go out to... You, you don't... People can't even imagine what it means to grind the the grains and make flour. They have no idea. It's just, you know, just flour is just something you buy in a packet. That's all. So everything is done by machine, and because they have no work to do, they have to go to the gym and get on some machines to do some exercise. <laughs> so they they'll they'll take the lift up the stairs. They'll never dream of walking. 
but then they, they, they pay to go to the gym to do some exercise. If they just did the normal functions which people do traditionally, then you know, there's no need of any gym. But, and they, 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 you'll find even now in traditional societies, you'll find people, they're like, they're not big and strong like they are, like rugby players. <laughs> But uh, they may be very spindly and thin, but they'll be walking for miles with a big bundle of of uh, twigs or firewood on their head. We can, you, you find your big rugby player, he can't do that. He won't have the strength to do So, Srila Prabhupada is pointing out, what is this society? Everything is made of plastic, <coughs> tin can motor cars. What, what is this opulence? It's not, not actually opulence. In modern society, even by paying, you can't get fresh food. What they call fresh food means it's already stale and dead. You just can't get it. It's, you can't get fresh air. You can't get fresh water. You, you have to buy spring water, which is already sitting inside a plastic bottle for some at least some days. So, what is the opulence? But people are enamored. Here's, here's, uh, some words from a disciple of mine. Many of my friends have gone out of India and are making big money and are just rotting in India. See, I'm living in India. I'm, I'm born in the West. And I'm just counting the days when I can go back to India. Because oh. that's the land of spiritual culture, despite India's present madness of trying to become so-called economically developed, there's definitely a difference in spiritual culture between there and here. The atmosphere is more favorable. It's stated that, stated in Shastra, that even the demigods want to take birth in India. They're, they went, they took so much endeavor to go up to the heavenly planets and then they're looking down and thinking, whoops, we should have gone there. <laughs> That's better, because what is all this material enjoyment? That's stated in the previous, it's many places. Yami maam pushpitam vachaam pravadanti avi pastitam vedavadartha pharta nyanyadastiti vadina kamatmana swarga para janma karma phala pradam kriyabhisheshu bahalam bhoga ishvarya gatim prati People who are bewildered by the Vedic sounds, they, they want to go to the heavenly planets being overcome by material desires and by the flowery words of the Vedas, they think this is all in all and thus they're bewildered even though they're following the Vedic process. They cannot attain the real result of following the Vedas, which is to become Krishna conscious. So, India at the present time is very much enamored by Western civilization, the prospect of becoming materially advanced, but the actual wealth of India is this bhakti, the spiritual culture, which is still there in so many places. And even despite the influence of Kali Yuga being so strong, and despite the influence of Mayavad being so strong, but still that tendency to Worship Krishna is there strongly in people. So the atmosphere is much better. Now I'll be going back to when I arrive shortly after that, I'll be going to Puri for Rathiyatra. And still, despite so much materialistic propaganda, literally lacks, hundreds of thousands of people will attend that festival. And not only in Puri. In, uh, in other, now in Bhuvaneshwar, Iskom Bhuvaneshwar started, thousands of people go there. In Barapada, which is a northern part in northern Orissa, there also there's a Rathiatra festival with many, many people attending. Iskom Calcutta organized Rathiatra festival with some, maybe two, three lakhs of people attending. In Baroda, Iskom, the, the police, they estimate more than two lakhs turn out. A lakh is a hundred thousand. In Ahmedabad, it's much more. That's not organized by ISKCON. Maybe, who knows how many lakhs of people. Just the streets are full of... So, dis in many, many places, they're, 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 that's just one festival. Kumbh Mela means 
vast crowds. Just maybe there, maybe more than 20, 30 lakhs of people are coming at the Kumbh Mela, Ardha Kumbh Mela. So despite so much materialistic propaganda, people are still inclined for spiritual life. And there are so many nice holy places where people have... Here we have, by Srila Prabhupada's mercy, so many holy places in America now, but the people in general, they don't appreciate. They don't... How, people are not coming, but... In, in the holy places in India, we're still, they're very well frequented. Even there are bogus holy places which have come up. Totally bogus, like Shirdi or something like that. Or, or. But uh, the tendency uh, to go to, what is that? Pada, Pada Hare, Hare Ketra. Pada Bivanda. What is that verse? Pada Hare Kshetra. Hmm? Padare Vandanam. Something like that. I can't remember exactly the word. The tendency to, to use the to the feet for going to holy places. Of course, nowadays mostly people go by train or bus, whereas previously it was walking. But people would walk. Still, you see, people walk from Maharashtra to Dwaraka. That's a takes a couple of months at least. In, in Dakar, in Gujarat, on the Punam, Purnima, still some tens of thousands of people, they walk from Medabad or various villages. The tendency is there. But, on the other hand, there are many Indians who are going outside India for Bhogaishvarya, Material enjoyment and opulence. So, it's unfortunate that those who are living in India, they don't appreciate. They, they think the grass is greener on the other side. Jo ganga ke paas rehte hai, aisa log to kabhi bhi ganga sna nahi karte. Aisa log to nahi. Those who live next to the Ganga, those who live next to the Ganges River, they'll never take bath in the Ganges. They, people will be, of course, many do, but people will come. We find in Chaitanya Charita Amrita, one of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates, actually seen it in Rangapuri, he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in South India. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, What's your next price? He said, I'm going to Bengal to take bath in the Ganga. And that means by walking. It's a several months project, maybe a year's project. So, yeah. I'm going to take a bath. Oh, come back quickly. Yeah, I'll be back in two years. <laughs> it's a, a one year project to walk. But, there is, but we often find people who live close to the Ganga, they don't take. So, people who. They, there are, they have contact. They think, ah, tomorrow I'll take bath. The next day I'll take bath. And I, sometime I'll take bath. They don't appreciate. So he's thinking, I'm rotting in India. He's living next to the temple. He has all opportunity to go to the temple, engage in kirtan, participate in temple activities, but not satisfied. Why? Because bhogaishvarya prasaktanam taya parita jetasam. He's thinking, my it, I'm living next to the temple. I have all opportunity to engage in devotional service. But my life would be better if I had more money. Misunderstanding. I was asking him to do some service. He said, probably I will get... He said, I, I can't do it, as my job is very demanding. Probably I will get time to do such services after I am a very wealthy and powerful man. So first I should become very wealthy and powerful and then maybe I'll do some service. Is this pure devotional service? No. The idea of I should become very wealthy and very powerful. Sometimes devotees think, that, well, I, first I have to become very wealthy and then I, then I can serve Krishna. 
first I have to adjust this and adjust that, then I can serve Krishna nicely. But there's no saying what is. What will happen in material life? We can't say. Prabhupada often, he said that, don't bother trying to learn anything new. Whatever you've got, do it and serve Krishna. Of course, if you're, if your children have to be educated, that's one thing. But uh, if we're thinking at the age of 50, I learn Sanskrit or something. But whatever you have, serve Krishna. There's no guarantee. Life is short. There's so much service to do. What is the essence? Concentrating on the essence. Keeping the eye of the bird in our focus. What is the essence? We have to serve Krishna. We can do that immediately. In whatever situation we are, we can chant Hare Krishna. We can engage in the activities of the Sankirtan movement. We don't need any pre-qualification. There's no material qualification needed. Now it may be that of course, the, the, the householders, they have various material responsibilities which can be like an, an anchor or a drawback in our service. So it may be that with some adjustment that isn't too difficult to make, one's material situation can be adjusted for the better. For instance, it may be possible to change jobs and with some small adjustment you can have a better situation to serve Krishna. So there's no harm in doing that. Oh, one devotee told me that I, I had to do some course, it'll take about nine months. During that time, my preaching and other devotional practices will be uh, much curtailed, but after that, I can earn literally double the money that I'm earning now. He's a family man, so all right, why not do it? He's a young man, he has family to look after, so all right. I sanction that. That's all right. But it's the point is to keep our focus very clearly. We may have to make some... We're not saying that material adjustments or attempts for material improvement in some ways need not be made in any circumstances, but the point is we have to be very clearly focused what is our goal of life and not get distracted by desires for material enjoyment, which are very strong in our hearts from time immemorial, and we may confuse even the desire for material. We may mix it up in our minds. We may cheat ourselves and think that, well, I'll become very wealthy and powerful, then I can serve Krishna. Well, how many times have we heard this kind of thing? I'll become, I'll become a great rock musician. And have you heard this one before? <laughs> I've heard it so many times. The devotees say, well, I'm going to become a great rock musician. And then, then I'll preach about Krishna consciousness and people will listen to what I say. But, uh, well, none of these ever became great rock musicians. There are famous musicians who have become devotees. And, yeah, you can use that. Why not? You have some name and fame, use it for Krishna's service. But the idea that I will become famous and then I'll use it for preaching, never seen it work to date. You can try if you like, but... Somehow or other, Krishna hasn't granted that to those who have that desire. So, it may be that one, if one desires to serve Krishna in a particular way, that Krishna may grant some name and fame and glory, but that can be dangerous also, that can be diverting. Recently I met for the first time a god-brother of mine, actually traveling in America, I meet many god-brothers and god-sisters for the first time because God bless America. Srila Prabhupada started his movement here, practically, and most of Prabhupada's disciples are from America. So that's a great blessing for America. But I hardly spend time in America, so I don't know many of them, so I'm, I'm meeting them from time to time. So I met Mangalananda Prabhu, who has a proclivity for modern music, which he's been using in the service of Krishna for many years. I met him and he was showing me some of his CDs and I said, well, how come you never made it to the big time after all this time? You didn't get the breaks. He said, well, if you sing about Krishna, you're not likely to make it to the big time <laughs> because people want to hear about Bhogaishvara. <laughs> he didn't say that, but that's... 
Even these songs, we peace, give peace a chance, a famous song from the 1970s, must have been. But it, it sounds very good, but give, in other words, the, the message is, we want a peaceful world. Stop the war in Iraq. It's very bad. We should live peacefully. We should all peacefully enjoy sense gratification. That's, <laughs> that's the message. It's not that peacefully we should serve Krishna. But we want peace so that we can all enjoy sense gratification. That's all. During the Vietnam War, Srila Prabhupada was preaching Krishna consciousness. The, the motto was, make love, not war. Make love means have sex. So, Srila Prabhupada pointed out that this war is inevitable. You're slaughtering the animals and by the laws of nature, the flowers of your country, the young men will have to be slaughtered. Now by the grace of women's liberation, it's not only the men that are slaughtered, but the women are also being slaughtered as a result of terroristic activities towards animals. That's, what, that's how Srila Prabhupada analyzed it. That there are literally millions of animals, if you include the chickens, are slaughtered every day. So, the more surprising thing is why there's not more reactions from material nature to this sinful activity. So, Mm. the idea that we will become first of all we'll become materially advanced then we'll serve Krishna it's, it doesn't work rather yes Yudhishya Maharaj who from the material point of view looked like he had it, he had it made he was set up to be the emperor. Some, what is that? Some people are born great. He was born great. He was the heir to the throne. But something happened along the way and he had what you might say from the materialistic point of view a pretty rotten life. <laughs> Had a pretty bad time, Yudhishthira Maharaj. Lost his opulence, lost his wife had to struggle so much and although he was a good man by nature he had to see in front of his eyes the slaughter of his whole dynasty and he left this world and lamenting an unhappy person for the slaughter of his dynasty so he was a great devotee of Krishna if we tell that you become a devotee, a member of the Hare Krishna movement and your material life will be very nice. If we tell like that, then many people may like to join, just like the Mormons are becoming very successful. More and more Mormons. <laughs> because they have some or other, they have some net, social network, economic network, and they're successful materially. But actually Krishna consciousness says, Yudhishthira Maharaj asked Krishna, well, I'm trying to be your devotee, so what, what's the symptom of your mercy? It, it seems difficult to understand. Do you, what, how is it manifest? As Janmaishvarya, Shruta, or Shri? As material opulence, material good birth, good looks, good intelligence? I mean, how, what, what, what is it? And Krishna told that my mercy is whatever you have, I take it away. And then uh, your family members reject you. That's my mercy. They think, what is the use of this old fool? He can't even give us, can't even earn enough to make our chapatis. Useless fellow. Reject it. Then you have nothing but Krishna. <laughs> so, that is Krishna's mercy. Very difficult to understand. The uh, we are anxious for our Krishna conscious movement to be accepted as a bona fide religion. But bona fide religion defined by people whose concept of a bona fide religion is that which is opposed to the real dharma of the living being. Uh, 
it'll be very difficult for them to actually understand what bona fide religion is. Bona, they generally think bona fide religion is in a in a way that's been going on for many years. We should pray to God or follow some rituals to a largely undefined God that He will, in the language of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsvati provide the fuel for the burning fire of our material desires. He will bring more fuel that we can. In, we, he'll throw it in the fire. He will bring it. Yeah. Bring the order supply. In English, he said. Order supply. God is our order supply. But Krishna consciousness, which is based on Srimad Bhagavatam, is from the very beginning. Dharma projita kaitava atra. Herein, that which is called cheating religion is fully rejected. So the idea, I will become very wealthy and very powerful, this is described by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita as being a tendency of a demoniac person. Iramadya maya labdha. Maya labdha. What's the next line? Iramadya maya labdha. Hmm? Now I can't remember also. Today, Adya, now, I have gained so much. Yeah, you can look it up. Say it. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Ah, read it out. All right, give it to me. I'll read it out so everyone can hear. The demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. Then the, the essence of the demoniac mentality, Ishwaraham Maham Bhogi. Ah, read it out. All right, give it to me. I'll read it out so everyone can hear. The demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. Then the, the essence of the demoniac mentality, Ishwaraham Maham Bhogi, I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. So this idea, I should become very wealthy and very powerful, is antithetic, opposite to Krishna consciousness. And our, our dear, bewildered disciple goes on to state, I don't know if my desires are going to be full, fulfilled in this lifetime. In other words, he's ready to dedicate life after life to become a wealthy and powerful person. If I don't succeed this time round, I'll become very determined to rot in material existence. Whereas, if we take Krishna consciousness seriously, if we see that the, the wealth and power of this material world are insignificant, and we simply surrender to Krishna, that Krishna, I am yours, then in this very lifetime we can be released from material existence and go to Krishna. The idea, I shall be happy in this material, well let me endeavor, I'm ready to endeavor life after life to get wealth. But what is this? In the, you get wealth, it won't last. How rich is Bill Gates? Anyone knows what's the latest figures? How many billions? He's supposed to be the richest man in the world still? 30 billion. Okay, how old is Bill Gates? This is a general knowledge group. How old is he? 65? He's so young. He's 46. Okay. Alright. Um, anyone want to estimate how much wealth he will have in another 46 years? 
Well, what makes you think he's going to be alive another 46 years? Most probably, he's going to be in another body, right? So, how long can you be wealthy and powerful? How powerful. There are so many powerful people. We've, we've heard the name of Attila the Hun. We've all heard of him. He's famous for being a nasty guy. You probably haven't heard. It's, it's in India. It's in, in the West, maybe. They, I just heard his name. It's, it's, it's like a... It's a term used if you want to say someone who's just like really nasty because he... He was a, the, the Huns of Germany. They used to, what is presently Germany, they were hordes of what were called barbarians who, they, his army went throughout Europe and he mercilessly decapitated and delegged and dearmed and de everything to people. He chopped them up into pieces and he was a demon. Successful demon. So, never heard of him. Yeah. So he was a very savage killer. Makes Saddam Hussein look like a three year old at his birthday party. <laughs> so uh powerful, but what what's the use of that power? Where is he now? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> What is the use? I will become wealthy, I will become powerful. What, what is the use? You can become a... Maybe you can become powerful, you see, in the ant's nest. There is the queen ant, right? And the ants, they know nothing but their, their own little world. As far as they're concerned, the whole universe is the nest and a little bit away from that, all around that. And the queen to them is... All in all, the Queen Ant has such powers that George Bush can only dream of. <laughs> Within her own little sphere. But then one day the gardener comes along and digs it all up and the whole ant's nest is destroyed. Or there's a severe rain and it's all flooded out. So, if, if we, if someone... The genie comes out of the bottle and says, what do you want? I want to be so powerful. I have so many workers under me. They're only thinking of serving me, fulfilling all my command, whatever I want. I'm a complete center of attention. Tatastu. Or what's the word they say? In Aladdin or something like that. So, and then he converts you into a queen ant. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Your desire is fulfilled. <laughs> and that actually happens. That's what actually happens. So many people want to be number one. Now the race for the American presidential election is already beginning. It's already there, right? You see who will be the Democratic candidate it's already beginning. So there are so many people who are desiring to be the pre politicians at various levels. They're all dreaming, in future I could be the president. But not everyone can be the president. So they have the, but they have the desire. By the force of material nature, that desire may be fulfilled. I want to be a big leader. But Karmana daiva neitrena jantur deho bhapati. That desire is fulfilled according, by higher direction according to our activities. So if we have the desire to be a big shot, but we don't have the punya or the piety to be a big shot like George Bush or Indra Dev, then we may become a queen ant or the head of a pack of dogs. In India, the dogs, they run around at night on the streets. One of them is the top dog. <laughs> so, that desire to be very big is fulfilled, but see in what a pathetic and miserable way. And even the, uh, the George Bush, pathetic and miserable 
thinking, everyone thinking very big, but temporarily big. He's a big fish in a small pond. It's a tiny little planet, and he has some apparent power. He's also a lame duck president now. So, it's simply phantasmagoria. And what's more, he has to take at least one-sixth of the reactions of his subjects, which is pretty bad, if you consider that the average American in a normal day, according to Shastra, fixes himself up enough sinful reactions to uh, be a guest of Yamaraj for a very long time. It's a very severe situation. So just see the power of Maya. That even someone is hearing about Krishna regularly. They may even be speaking about Krishna. But the desire, I shall become wealthy, I shall become powerful, that enters the heart. And bewilders one. So sadhu sabdha. Be careful. But sangat sanjayate kamaha. Our desires develop according to our association. That's why we always have to be very careful to keep our association very pure. Hearing and chanting about Krishna. This is the essence of existence, to hear and chant about and serve Krishna. The material world is very dangerous. We're surrounded by so many materialistic people. With the mercy of Guru and Krishna, we can see through the eye of Shastra and understand that the endeavor for material happiness is simply an illusion. But if we're not specifically cultivating that vision, then at any time we can be bewildered and fall to the level of a dancing fool in the hands of Maya. To take to devotional service is a very exalted position. It's a very fortunate position. But... It's also kshurasya dhara. It's the razor's edge. So, we have to be very careful while shaving. If one is not attentive, one can cut oneself very easily. Nowadays they have fancy razors, but the open razor, if you're not very careful, then cut, can cut very easily. So, Bhogaishvarya Prasaktanam. This could be understood in another way, I suppose. Maybe Radhika Raman Prabhu can tell me. I don't know if any commentators have said like this. But if we are attached to the Krishna's Bhog, Krishna's enjoyment, that is Bhakti, Krishna's opulence, Aishvarya, that's a name for Lakshmi Devi. So, it's also a name for Radharani. So, Krishna is Bhogaishvarya Prasakta. He's very much attached to his enjoyment. He's, he is the proper object. He is Ishvara Hamham Bhogi. When Krishna says, I am the enjoyer, I am the controller, if anyone says like that, they're a demon. Is that correct? No. When Krishna says, it's true. If anyone else says, they're a demon. That's all. So Krishna, he is the enjoyer. He is the proper object of it. He is the one to be served. Jiva Surupoy Krishna Nityadas. The dharma of the jiva is to serve Krishna. And Krishna Surupoy Jiva Nitya Prabhu. Krishna's position is the eternal master of the jivas. So it is proper for him to enjoy. And as parts and parcels of him, the jivas, the living beings who partake in his enjoyment, they also enjoy a subsidiary enjoyment. So if one is attached to fostering or serving Krishna's enjoyment, then one will never be, one's intelligence will never be diverted to meditation on material opulence, material enjoyment, or one's, one's meditation, or one's at attraction will never be diverted to the Eightfold Yoga system. I don't know if any 
Acharya commented like that. Be aware of that. But presumably it could be understood like that, although it's not in the context of the, of the other verses. If one is attached, that is the, that is the commendable attachment, to be attached to Krishna. So let us pray to Krishna that we may be always attached to his service and to the service of his devotees and not become attracted to the foolishness of desiring to enjoy and dominate this material world, which we can never do, we can never enjoy, we can never dominate. But that desire, if that arises in our heart, then our focus on devotional service then, that cannot take place. It's a warning for us, very dangerous. Be careful. If we want Krishna, then we can't, whatever else we may desire, then don't cultivate that. That's the verse that came to my mind when I read this letter this morning. So, this disciple of mine was I like him very much, but I'm sorry that after many years of devotional service, this foolishness has arisen in his heart. So, we all, to the extent that we're not fully absorbed in acting for Krishna's enjoyment, then that much we're diverted to material enjoyment. So, it's a lesson for us all. We should all consider this. Isn't it? How much are we concerned with Krishna's enjoyment? With this deity worship that is a good opportunity for Krishna's bhog and aishwarya to be served. As I said, we can offer nice food to Krishna. Think always how to make Krishna's service Perfect in all respects. Daily, everything. Very nice. First class. Everything should be first class for Krishna. In this age, because of the contaminated nature of the age, Srila Prabhupada told us not to use jewelry, which should be used in the service of Krishna. Expensive jewelry. Precious stones and gold. Don't use. Then thieves will come. Such a bad situation. Even pujaris, sometimes that may happen. They may become contaminated. Seeing that, it happens. It's been known to happen. But nice dresses, nice food, best food for Krishna, all the best items, as far as possible. Cook nicely for Krishna. Make nice garlands. Make the music best everything best beautiful festivals invite everyone call the mayor of the city you have mayors in America they have mayors You're right they have mayors ask him to sweep the road in front of the cart he does that here they do that you, call, you can call them to do in many cities around the world they do that you can tell it's a, it's a tradition that they do as, as a sign of humility before God Many places they do. So that's very good. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased when he saw Maharaj Prataparudra that even though he is the Ishvara and Bhogi apparently of the Orissa kingdom he recognized that actually I'm simply the servant of Lord Jagannath. There's a very nice story, maybe you know that story of Maharaj Prataparudra. That, uh, what was that? That really remember. He was fighting with the king of Vijayanagar. They're both Vaishnavas. They're fighting. See, it's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were seriously fighting. I mean, you know, real wars they're having. So, Oh yes. So to to make the peace, um, 
The king of Vijayanagar, he wanted to uh, give his daughter to Maharaj Prataparudra. So he visited his kingdom and he saw at the Rath Yatra that Maharaj Prataparudra, he's sweeping the road. He said, I'm not going to give my daughter so sweeping the road. Sweeper is a very low occupation. That caste consciousness is there. Kshatriyas, they're very they're being served by others, living in great opulence. That when, that's stated in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita that when Maharaj Prataparudra he conquered over the king of Vijayanagi, he brought the Manikya Singhasana. He offered that to was it to Lord Jagannath or to Saki Gopal? The, the, the highly de- famous, highly decorated throne. Decorated means with all valuable jewels, highly valuable. So the king was saying, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. His, or was it his minister had seen like that? So he said, I'm not going to give my daughter to us. So Maharaj Prataparudra became very angry and he went and conquered his kingdom and kidnapped the girl and told his minister that you marry her to a sweeper. That's a great insult. King's daughter to be married to a sweeper. So the minister was thinking that he's doing this in anger, but if I do this, this will make perpetual war between these two kingdoms. It's not a very... The minister means he he's more cool-headed than the king. <laughs> the king is a kshatriya. I mean, he's pure devotee, but Bhim is also a pure devotee, but yes, that uh, angry temperament is the kshatriya temperament. Can't tolerate any insult, even a slight one. So uh, the king was saying, I, I can't do this. So he said, uh, said he, 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 Maharaj Prataparis said, you find, you find the best sweeper in the kingdom, fit for a king's daughter should be the best sweeper. So he said, I can't do this. And the girl is crying and crying, oh, the night is sweeper. He told, don't worry. Just re- <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, uh, he kept it, he said, for some time. And uh, Some time went past, and time Rathiatra came, and uh, the Maharaj Prataparudra is again sweeping the road. <laughs> And he brought the girl out and said that, I think you're the best sweeper in the kingdom. <laughs> you should marry her. By this time his anger had gone down. He said, oh, okay, all right. So this way he solved the problem. All right. Any questions, comments, protests about this class? Yeah. Uh, why is it that after performing years of devotional service, uh, the desire for bhoga and ashraya still remain. Could one argue that devotional service is not effective? Yeah, it's a very good question, often asked question. Why is it that after performing years of devotional service, desires for bhoga and ashraya remain? Is it that devotional service is not effective? Now, devotional service is effective, but it has to be performed properly to be fully effective. Srila Prabhupada often said that devotional service is a science. Jnanam, teham, savigyanam. Vigyana, this word we often find. Science in Bhagavad Gita. So it's just like in a chemical process. You have a chemical engineer in a factory. So they're making various polycarbons or whatever it is. So it is, if the in the process, if the mixture of chemicals is not exactly according to the prescription. If the temperature and the pressure is not exactly as it should be, then you get a different kind of polymer or whatever it is produced. Just like in India, it's very common that making hooch or daru, or it's uh, illegal distilled alcohol. Rice, usually made from rice. So, if you boil uh, 
at the, at the right temperature, then you get ethyl alcohol, which is somewhat digestible. That's the standard alcohol in whiskey, brandy, gin, rum, vodka, etc. But then if you boil at a different temperature, then you then the next is methyl, and then you get more. And methyl alcohol is much more poisonous. And others are highly dangerous. So you find it's a common thing in India, you'll, because people are doing it illegally, under not properly controlled conditions. And often you'll find in one village, a hundred people blinded from drinking country liquor, they call it. Or a hundred people die because they didn't do it scientifically. Little difference. So if we don't follow exactly, then we don't get the right result. Uh, we also find in Chaitanya Charitamrita an explanation is given there. Ek Krishna nama kari sarva papa kari. If one, by chanting Hare Krishna even once, one can be free from all sin. And that sin, that means all the stages. What is that? Aparabdha falang bhavam kutam bijam falomukam. The various stages from the very desire of, of sin can be that can be fully wiped out by chanting Hare Krishna. But it's also stated that if one uh, if one does not experience an ecstasy in chanting Hare Krishna, then tobe jane aparatahate prachur the offenses are still prominent. So one has to seri seriously endeavor to overcome Offenses. At the time of awarding Harinam, the ten offenses are recited, isn't it? There has to be a serious endeavor to overcome that. It, there may be various reasons. It may be that it may be even the effect of some offense, even from a previous life, that's becoming that's becoming prominent. That's Vedic psych. We have modern psychology, various theories, but Vedic psychology, which it's also adopted in. Buddhism, this, uh, the idea of the samskars, the impression in the heart, which may come out after many years or many lifetimes. The imp one sees something, thinks something, and the, the, there's immediately some something goes in the consciousness. It may go very deeply and come out later on. By performing pure devotional service, that can be eradicated. But uh, if one is, not, then again, if one is not very serious in one's Nam Bhajan, then the effect of destroying offenses won't be there. So we have to be, it's, we have to be very careful. It, it may be very difficult. We have to pray for the mercy of Hari Guru and Vaishnav. It may be very difficult to understand exactly what we should do. Just like, for instance, in what we could call orthodox iskon, the Ritvik Vad is considered to be offensive. And in the Ritvik Vad camp, or Ritvik camp as it's rather inaccurately called, They're not, I mean, to be a Ritvik, you actually have to sit in a sacrifice. It's a Ritvik Vad, or Ritvik Vadi. So, uh, they consider that, how orthodox Iskon is following that, they also consider that offensive. And if you see all the different arguments, it may, for one who's not philosophically astute, then uh, listening to both, either side might seem to make sense. So, what do you do? You could get caught. That was my, that's what I was thinking when I was a child, being raised in a Catholic family, and 
the idea if, if, if you don't believe in the Virgin Mary you go to hell and then the Protestants on the other side of the street if you do believe in the Virgin Mary you go to hell so uh, what to do I'll stand in the middle of the street and when the day of judgment comes I'll see which side God's chariot is coming down on and rush in that church because you know it's like a Russian roulette kind of thing how can you tell it requires some mercy also that mercy uh, we can become uh, 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 eligible for by sincerity the, the, the sincere desire to surrender to Krishna then uh, if we are sincere then we will find guru good association everything we will get I'm not saying that Ritvik Vard is a good alternative because we can see the fruits of that, that actually people become very much inclined to Vaishnava Parana. So, philosophically, by word jugglery, it may seem to be very good. And yeah, the Guru Vard, as they call it, we also seem to be having problems with that. But Felena Parichyate, one has to see the, the, the result of that if one wants to base one's bhakti on finding the faults in others, then it's not bhakti. And that is the manifestation of Ritvigva. But I'm just using that as an example that it that uh, it may be very difficult to understand what exactly is the right path. There, inevitably, after the departure of Srila Prabhupada, various controversies have arisen within our movement because he brought Krishna consciousness to the Western world. It's a different culture to that of India, and Srila Prabhupada made certain adjustments. And to what level these adjustments should be? continued or increased or should we go more toward the traditional role model that's the, that last well I'm in favor of that the, 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 the traditional culture is favorable for spiritual life and the, the modern culture which Srila Prabhupada made adjustments for it's intrinsically not because the modern culture is very much Bhogaishvarya Yukta or geared towards material enjoyment and sense gratification, material opulence. So I'm in favor, and I see Srila Prabhupada's teachings that we should, as far as possible, try to move more towards that traditional Vedic culture. But there are others who vehemently disagree with it, say, no, well, Prabhupada did like this, so we should do like this forever. And I, I don't necessarily agree that what everything that Prabhupada did, he wanted us to do forever. That what he was preaching among, uh, as in his own words, basically we come from an uncivilized, barbarian kind of background. So the, the adjustments that he made for that are not, it doesn't mean that the whole Vedic culture should be thrown out and we should remain barbarians for, uh, forever and just add the chanting of Hare Krishna. Or rather the culture, if, as much as we adopt it, then that much will be helpful for us. But it's a controversial point. So there will be different outlooks on this and it can be confusing. So ultimately sincerity will be our guide. Sincerity means the sincere, or the, we're using a word to define the word. Sincerity means, anyabhidashita shunyam jnana kama dhyana vitamana kugena krishnana shivanam bhakti ruttama. The desire to serve Krishna in a manner that is pleasing to him, devoid of extraneous motives. It's a big topic. What's your answer?
what would you say if someone asked you that question? Besides uh, the, the two angles you gave, I would mm. say I, I, um, I, I can't think of any conclusion. Mm. That's the basis. More could be said. It could be elaborated on more. One thing we should also know is that, uh, what is that Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita? That, uh, Durgatim Tatagachati. What's the first line of that? Hmm? One who does good is never. Kalyana Krikkaschit. Nahi Kalyana Krikkaschit. Durgatim Tatagachati. One who takes to the auspicious path. He never, he doesn't attain Durgati, doesn't go down. Even temporarily one may do so. But Krishna looks after. Kunteya Patijani Himame Bhantapranashati. Krishna's devotee is not destroyed. So we shouldn't become discouraged. Even we see many devotees fall down, but we shouldn't think that bhakti is ineffective. But rather we should see that this is the proof that bhakti is effective. Because those who don't follow it properly fall away. The, the path given by the Acharyas is effective and the proof is that those who don't follow it properly fall away. So it's actually proof that bhakti is effective. But that they don't fall away permanently is further proof that bhakti is effective. <laughs> Anything else? Any questions from the junior department? He's tired, probably, huh? Eh? Is it? Um, yes, but it may take some time because there uh, someone's recording it. All right. Well, there are a bunch of CDs out there of various lectures I've given in various places. Hindi, maybe. CD Upalante. Hindi Prabhachan. Bangla or oh no, Bengali I can ask you. There's no Bengali is it? Have any Bengali? No. Hello, I was going to ask you a question on the letter you got that he was doing a devotional service and devotional service is finished by the earth. But is it like we have to give up our attachment to the material enjoyment and since we are not going to give up, that's why we fall into this trap. Well looks like it, doesn't it? That's the danger. If we're, if we're simultaneously cultivating material desires as well as spiritual desires, actually it doesn't work. It really contaminates the process. It's a severe contamination. If, For instance, if we're thinking, I will chant Hare Krishna to serve Krishna. But we're thinking, uh, I'll sing so sweetly and nicely and people will recognize that. Then... People may recognize, but Krishna doesn't recognize. It doesn't, it ceases to be bhakti. Either it's for Krishna or it's not for Krishna. Idam hi vishvam bhagavan nivetara. This material world is a Krishna. It's not, not Krishna, but it's, it's the world of not thinking of Krishna, or not being in Krishna consciousness. Hopefully soon I'll be publishing a book on Bhakti Siddhanta Svartakura in which practically all of his preaching is just showing what isn't bhakti to show what is bhakti. Maya comes in so many forms. Bahurupini Maya. There's a very nice purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I believe that's in the verse. This is the essence. What is the... What is the essence of Krishna consciousness? One verse can explain. All the Vedic literature can be summarized. Atendriya priti vancha tare bale kam krishnendriya priti icha dhare premana. That the desire to fulfill our own personal sense enjoyment that is called lust and the desire to satisfy Krishna's senses that is called love. That's it. Everything is summarized there. The whole dharma of the jiva is summarized therein. So in that purport, I believe it's in the Bhakti Sarasvata comments that sense enjoyment can be conducted under all kinds of different labels. 
such as uh, public service, health, uh, so, so many different labels, religion, every, everything you can think of, even bhakti can be conducted. Actually, it's, it's not. There are so many incidences. This uh, one story was told there, that's from this Gauri I'm giving, under the one article called Swarasiki Siddhi. So, it's, uh, there's some examples of what is not Swarasiki Siddhi or one's own personal service to Krishna. That there is one professional Bhagavatam reciter in Bengal, who was he went he walked ten miles in the evening to the place. Walking means that was the method of transport, mostly walking or going by boat. Or, so he walked ten miles to the place where he had to give his recitation. Professional Bhagavatam reciter means he speaks and then people give him umbrellas and different things and then he sells them wholesale and gets his money back. So he went. It was a cold evening, it was warm in the day and cold at night, as much of India is in the winter. Probably, no, here it's going to be warm at night here, tonight also. So, he reached there after walking a long way, he began his recitation, then all of a sudden he remembered, he, in one lecture he was telling this incident. He said, one winter night, I, I, I left home, I walked 10 miles. I just begun my lecture when I remembered that my deity Gopal, I'd left him in the room with the window open. And now it must be cold. So he went back as fast as he could. He ran back to his home. He left the lecture. He ran back and he went, closed the window, put warm clothing on Gopal, bowed down and offered him obeisances and apologized. And then he made some nice fresh tea, offered it to Gopal and took the prasad remnants. So he, he himself gave this as an example of Swarasiki Siddhi. But it's bogus. It sounds very good because he likes to drink tea. He's very strict. He would never drink tea without offering it first to Gopal. But it's bogus because it's it's not according to Shastra. Ya Shastra Vidimutrisha Vartate Kama Karataha Nasa Siddhima Bhavnati Nasukam Naparangatim. Shastra has so many rules and regulations which are to be followed. If one neglects to follow them and acts according to one's own personal desire, then one cannot attain perfection. Uh, 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 perfection, happiness, or the supreme destination. So you may think I'm doing bhakti. I offered the tea for Gopal's pleasure, but Gopal doesn't drink tea. It's actually for my pleasure. I want to drink. So there are many things to be said in this regard. But I'll finish. If there, those CDs are there, if anyone would like to take of lectures and various books I've written are available. Prabhupada told me to write books, so. I presume he wanted me to publish them also. And they should be distributed. So some of those books are. You want to bring the set of books we can show. Them. Any more questions about this? Maharaj, isn't it very difficult to be such pure though? I mean, like, is it difficult to be pure? No, is, it, is, it, is it not very difficult to be pure? I mean, it, yes. Very well, is it difficult to be pure? No because we are pure by nature. As Srila Prabhupada would often say, what is the difficulty? But on the other hand, it is difficult. We find it difficult. What's the reason for that? Anyone would like to offer any suggestion? Why we find it difficult? Because our souls are covered by ignorance. Any other suggestions? Attachment to sense gratification. Any other suggestions? These are correct answers. Here's my take on it, because we're all rascals. <laughs> we don't want to surrender to Krishna. We're all rascals. Story in Mahabharata. 
If you take one of these CDs, you'll hear I tell the same stories again and again and again. That one king, in, he had all his ministers, brahmanas, and was asking them, he was asking, the question came up, why can't we get free from Maya? So, so many brahmanas, they gave their learned replies, they all gave different replies. And then they looked at the oldest, wisest Brahmana. He hadn't said anything. He was just listening. They looked to him, expecting to him to speak. What will he say? So he got up and he went to one pillar in the courtyard and embraced it. And said, let me go, let me go, let me go. And they thought, he's become senile. He's crazy. What happened to him? And he did this for a few minutes and then he said, this is why we don't get free from Maya. <laughs> We're holding on and saying, let me go. <laughs> so, Sadhu Kripa, mercy of pure devotion. Shuddha bhakata charana renu bhajana anukul. 